My favorite RGB light is the Aperture MC. Well, I'm happy to announce it now comes in two sizes, regular and family size. Let's get undone. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undyne, and I don't always live stream, but when I do, I stream with zebras on. Okay, so first up, for my viewers who haven't heard much about this light yet, this is the Nova P300C from Aperture, and it's a whole lot more than just a giant Aperture MC. And if you haven't heard much about this light yet, I recommend you check out the videos from Curtis Judd and Tommy Calloway, because they've already covered most of the pertinent details. So instead, I'd like to focus on Aperture as a brand, and what I think we should take from this new light. I know from reading your comments that many of you don't have a huge budget when it comes to lighting, and price is usually the most prohibitive factor when it comes to some of the lights I recommend. So I figured if I came in here and just made a straight up review of this panel, I'd probably get accused of being out of touch with my audience a little, even if this light is pretty much perfect and easily deserving of its price tag. Now I've made some videos recently on the new Godox COB lights, and while I like those lights and think they offer great value, I found some of the comments on those videos quite interesting. There were some comparisons being drawn between the new Godox and the old Aperture, suggesting that Aperture used to be a value brand, but now they've become too high-end and have become more of a status purchase rather than an economically functional one. And while I was considering those comments, Aperture launched this new light at a whopping 1700 US dollars, which I think probably solidified that notion in those commenters minds. But after playing with this light for a little while and realizing that not only is it the finest light Aperture's ever made, I've come to the conclusion that Aperture isn't just getting more expensive because they're popular, instead they're just bringing that same old Aperture value but to higher end categories. This P300C for example is clearly going after the RE Sky Panel S30C which costs $5,000. So if you look at it from that angle, this is still very much a value option. But there's also no way to get around the fact that for many independent creators, this light is not going to make sense budgetarily even if it is fantastic, which it is. Not only does it boast the best synthetic measurements I've ever taken on a light, but the user experience is stellar. The control box has dedicated knobs for each function, and those functions cover pretty much anything I've ever thought to be in a light. Here, let me just show you. Okay, so the first thing I actually like about this control box is the fact that you don't have to have it attached to the back of the light. They give you a second cord, which is much longer, and a second bracket thing that this clips into, like a quick release. So you could actually like further down the C-stand, attach it there, and control it here while having the light up above. So that's great. But if you just want to have it as like one fixture, you can just attach the control box on the back, like I do now, and they just have a smaller, like, I don't know, 18 inch cord that comes along with it for that. But now let's actually go through all the functions on this control box because there is a crazy amount of features built into this light. So first off, obviously we have the CCT mode which changes color temperature. Right now we're on 5600 Kelvin and every feature has dedicated knobs like I was saying. So we can go all the way down to 2000 Kelvin and then all the way up to 10,000. And the knobs are acceleration based so the faster you turn them the more they move. But you can also dial it in small amounts with 100 or large turns will be 1000. It's intuitive, it works well. So we'll set that back. Up top here we've got intensity, same way, the faster you turn it, the brighter it goes up. And then it also has a green magenta shift, which is fantastic. You can go all the way to minus one and all the way up to plus one to shift between the green and the magenta, which is gonna make it much easier to match lights that maybe are too magenta or too green, or with LEDs often they kind of shift over their lifetime. So you could keep this congruent as the light ages, which is awesome. Along the bottom here, there's four preset buttons that we can use to save particular light settings that we like, which I think is fantastic. Now if we press light mode, we can go through the different modes. So right now we're in CCT, and then we can go to HSI, which is a colored mode, obviously for hue and saturation. We'll get more into that in a second. Effects for going through the different light effects. RGB, another colored mode. This one allows you to dial in the specific red, green, and blue values. We've got X and Y for choosing your specific coordinates for the two values, as well as intensity. And then source, which is this fantastic option that allows us to go and choose tungsten, incandescent, halogen, antique bulb. There's so many in here. I'll just kind of blast through them real quick. But like warm antique, Christmas lights, night light, infrared, grow light, CFL, so you can match the different fluorescent lights that you might have bought that are listed for soft white, bright light. You've got some presets in there. Then you've got HMI, sodium, mercury vapor, ceramic. Just look how many different light matches there are. Candle, gas fire, sun direct, sun overcast, sun blue hour, mobile phone, computer monitor, <laughs> like blowtorch, road flare, amber caution, green traffic light, yellow traffic light, red traffic That's cool. You can go through the traffic lights even see like green, yellow, red, blue glow stick, green. It's, it's ridiculous how many like similar lights they've built into this. Anyway, let's get out of this mode. Then we can also go into gel. This is fantastic as well. So you choose what you want your base to be, either 3200 or 5600. So if we chose 5600, for instance, now we're daylight, then we can come over here and choose which gel we want. So we could put on, for instance, I had a half CTO on. So even though we're on daylight, now we have like a Roscoe half CTO, but there's so many. You can choose between two different types of gels. 
and then they have the actual gel code numbers in here. And again, there's so many of them. And these are for color correction, but there's also different types. If you don't just want to do color correction as well, there's, I don't know how many gels there are built in this thing, but it is absurd the amount of just like emulations that this light can do. For effects, it's got all the regular ones we've seen from Aperture before. You know, we've got club lights, paparazzi, lightning, TV, candle, fire, strobe, explosion, faulty ball, pulsing, welding, cop car, color chase, party lights. Those are RGB cycling ones and then fireworks. And the best part about this is now that this is a full color panel, the effects actually become a lot more useful because rather than just strobing like white light on your face or having the source be so small with the little RGB lights that do this as well, you now get a large source that can really sort of emulate things. So like the welding, for instance, is really good because it puts blue into the light and makes it look a lot like welding. But also the cop car mode is really bright. So you can do a really good job of simulating uh, cop car cherries, but also you can do them between if you want, you know, red, blue, and white or blue and white or red and blue, you have the options to go through. So that's awesome. And then we also have things like fire and candle. So the fire, for instance, is now powerful enough, but also colorful enough that you can choose whether you want it to be warmer, natural or cooler. And also whether you want it to just range between like the CCT range or also add color into the mix. So with fireworks, for instance, you have CCT plus hue, which allows you to sort of go through a whole range of fireworks like you can see here, or you could have just hue if you didn't want to do CCT ones or just CCT if you didn't want to contaminate your shot with color and you just wanted to range in temperature. So this gives you the most options I've ever seen mixing effects with a bright light with color and everything. This is your best effects panel I think exists currently for the money. And then lastly, the only other mode that I think we didn't talk about yet was HSI. This is the one for just sort of setting your color. I think this is the best way for it. You've got your hue, which you can dial in and then your intensity, which right now it's at 0.1%, but obviously we can turn that up and then your saturation if you want to mix it because this is an RGB WW panel so we can get a really nice mix between like a white light and then how much of the color we want to mix in there and it performs very similar to their aperture panels but again just bigger brighter and much easier to control having dedicated dials without needing to do clicks and stuff like that so fantastic for the amount of functions just that gel collection and the light emulation collections are so appreciated it's also absurdly powerful for soft light. I was getting just over 10,000 lux at one meter away at 100% power at 5600 Kelvin. Those are similar numbers to the 300D Mark II without a modifier, but from a soft panel. And if you want it even softer, there's modifiers that slot into this recess on the front bezel, but it's bright enough that you could probably just do a large bounce with it to soften the light that way too. Okay, here's the light, probably just over a meter away. And we're at 10% intensity now at 5600 Kelvin. And let's go down. So you can go all the way down to 0.1%, which is what it looks like here. Off, 0.1%, and then we'll just take it up. So this is 11%, 21%, 32, 52, 62, 75, 96, and that's 100%. And we've been at F4 this entire time. So this is 100% at F4, but a meter away. So I think like for a reasonable exposure here, we can get it down to, I'm still, I've still got zebras on my arm and shoulder here. So I don't know, like this is 12%, I would say maybe. So plenty of output. And if we jump into the menu, we can see that we have the curve adjustment that I loved about the 300D Mark II that allows us to choose how the brightness ramps up with linear being my preference. And it works with their terrific app that just like with the Aperture MCs, allow you to pick a target color in your scene and then reproduce that on the panel. Pretty cool. But as much as I like their control box and their app, I'm a bit disappointed that I can't use my regular Aperture remotes with this light. I know the remote isn't sophisticated enough to control all the functions, but I wish I could still turn it on and off like I can with my other lights. The only thing it can't do that the Aperture MC can is stick to things with magnets because just like the RE Sky panel, this is heavy at just over 10 kilos or 22 pounds, but it's also impeccably well built. Maybe Aperture's best to date. There's a lot of really nice touches and details that highlight the effort put into this build. One of the reasons why it's so heavy is because the power supply is built into the fixture. So there's no dirty danglers or boxes on the floor, but that also means there's a fan in the light, so it's not completely silent. It has the same option as the recent aperture lights to run it with auto fan or always on, which I appreciate because it makes it a lot easier to do noise reduction in post with a static noise level. 
But if you leave it on auto, I found that the fan didn't come on until around 30 to 40% power at room temperature, which is still quite a bit of output if you need silent operation. And even with the fan on, it's not too loud. Quieter than the 120D Mark II and 300D Mark II. Okay, here I am reviewing the light even though I said I wasn't going to. Again, watch Curtis Judd's video, he did a better job than I probably will. Also, as much as I'm lauding Aperture for being awesome, this video isn't sponsored. I'm just a big fan. I know the Aperture team personally and I've seen a bit of how the sausage gets made and I'm happy to recommend a brand that I believe in. So let's get back to the topic at hand and the discussion I wanted to have with you guys. Is Aperture 2 big time now? To me, it seems that they're coming up with the best light they can in a specific category and then moving on to the next one, which yes, does seem to be bigger and more expensive categories, but those other lights still exist. The 120D Mark II is still an exceptional COB light and you can still buy their smaller panels and even the Aperture F7, which is an outstanding little bicolor panel for only $100. In every price category or light size or output level, Aperture has one of the top products in the running. So no, I don't think they've gone too big time for the little indie filmmaker, and as we've seen with their Mark IIs and with the new combo kits for the MC, they still revisit their other popular offerings frequently. I suppose the only drawback to Aperture continuing to tackle bigger and brighter product segments is that it leaves space for competition to come in and create cheaper alternatives, again, like those Godox lights I've been reviewing lately. But in a weird way, the reason why we can't just consider Godox the new value brand that Aperture used to be is because Aperture's trail making in those categories is likely the reason why we have these offerings from Godox and why their design so closely resembles Aperture's older designs. Whether they're selling value products or paving the way for competing value products to be sold, there's no denying that Aperture has and continues to improve the way budget operations light their shots. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments if you're okay with Aperture trying to bring value to the premium market, or if you're in the opposite camp and you just wish they'd stick to making cheaper lights. As I already said, I'm okay with it because it's not like they discontinued the more affordable offerings, and they do release improvements to those products somewhat frequently, like these new combo kits from the Aperture MC. I'm sure you've probably seen these already, but I recently got my 4 light kit, and for someone who enjoys magnets, this does not disappoint. Check this out. So basically, you get four Aperture MCs in this kit, and you've got USB charging ports right here, they're 5 volt, 2 amps, and the entire package can be powered from a single inlet, and then there's vents on the bottom to keep everything cool because it's also a charging station. So not only do the panels charge wirelessly by setting them in there, but like I said, if you're a fan of magnets like me, they also very strongly stick in place, and then you can, I don't know, Turn it upside down and shake it if you want to impress people like a Dairy Queen. And because they come in this little briefcase, if you want to do a bit of a gimmicky shot, you could set them all to like a warm orangey glow and then open it up like that scene in Pulp Fiction. Is this what I think it is? And it also comes with this accessory kit, which includes a couple of those diffusion panels, as well as Velcro if you want to stick it onto things, uh, a couple USB charging things, and couple little aperture ball heads, which are actually pretty good. They hold a lot more weight than just an aperture MC, so those are handy to have in general. And then the cables, like I said, for actually powering this little briefcase. Anyway, I know this wasn't really much of a review and a departure from what I normally do, but I spent so much time picking apart every little detail of a product that I just needed to take a break from that and to take a minute to just appreciate how fantastic everything is these days if you're trying to shoot video. Whether you have a lighting budget of $200 or $2,000, there's products for you. And if you're looking to throw down some serious money on a light, I don't think you can possibly do better for the money than the Nova P300C. Man, this video does sound a lot like an ad. I suppose, in regular, undone fashion, I should say something oddly specific and critical about the light. Well, it squeaks too much when you take it out of the box, which gave me goosebumps, which I did not appreciate, and the smaller cord right here for putting the control box on the back of the light didn't really bend in a favorable way, which made it much harder to cable manage. Come on, Aperture. Get it together. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video entertaining, or at least helpful. And if you did, make sure to leave the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, try setting the playback speed to 75%. Alright. I'm done.